Oh man, I am sweating. Buckets. Oh, hello. <laughs> and as you can probably see, I've got the big backpack on. Probably for the first time, yeah, since the first time since December. So we're into May now, well into May. So it was uh, halfway through December. So what's that? Nearly six months. And uh, quite apprehensive. Not sure if I'm going to make the top. This is the first time I've had a big pack on after my knee. So this is the test. I've got my third physio appointment next week, next weekend. And I really need to test out the heavy pack. I've been on short walks and day hikes, uh, which have been, have been good. I've had no pain, so I just thought I need to try it out. And uh, although the weather's not blue skies, it's forecast to be dry, but the grass has got lots of water on it. So I think it has been raining and the sky does look <laughs> a bit threatening. So let's see if I can get up here. If I, if I don't get all the way to the top, I'll certainly try and find a pitch to, to put the tent uh, before I get there. Because I'm not sure if I'm going to make it or not. And I might actually talk about my backpack because loads of you um, have asked me about that. So I've not made my mind up about that yet. But anyway, I need to get, uh, crack on and see if I can get a bit further up without any knee pain. Let's go. So far, so good. Not much in the way, the path's up here <laughs> Hence why I've got these uh, gators on I'll uh, maybe talk about that in a wee while But yeah, lots of heather, little paths <laughs> uh, A little bit of heather bashing Woo wee Oh, I tell you I'm sweating. <laughs> Should have put my buff on as a sweatband. I am roasty toasty. Oh, I can see where I'm going now. I'll spin the camera around in just a second and show you my destination. Oh yeah. Right. I'm probably blocking the view now, but the ridge behind me, I'm heading up there and there's two points. <laughs> there's two parts, which I'm not sure which one I'm going to try and get to. This one, this closest one's actually the higher summit. And then the other one, if I move over this way, just on the edge of your frame, that's it, another point. It's a wee bit lower, but it might give a better viewpoint, I'm not sure. If the first one is looking pretty good, I'll probably just camp there. And there's a, there is an ancient hill fort on the top of this uh, this uh, this hill, so I might talk a bit about that later on as well. But right now I need to get going, I'm about halfway I think. Uh, and he's still holding out alright, again, I've said this numerous times, it's going to be the way down that really tests it. But I should get a feel for it going uphill in the next wee while anyway with this big backpack on. So yeah, let's um, let's get going. I think I should be up there within 40 or 45 minutes depending. As I said, there's no path, so that always makes things a little bit more difficult. But the views are fabulous. The uh, clouds staying above the tops, which is nice. It'd be nice if it cleared and the sun came out, but it just doesn't feel like that's going to happen. So yeah, let's get on a bit and I'll report back in a wee while. Let's go. Ooh. Oh, it's a nice breeze coming up the side of this hillside here. It's quite steep down here, and the wind's just coming up the glen and cooling me off a wee bit. It's actually really nice. I'm not going to complain. Oh, nice bit of rock. The other thing is I've come a wee bit away from the edge of the glen where it was steeper and over the back here you can see it's rolling high moorland and hills over there. In fact, you might think I'm joking but you can actually see Shahalian if it wasn't for the cloud. <laughs> it's over there somewhere. But lovely, it's just two contrasting landscapes. Well, the gradient's starting to ease a little bit so I don't think too far from the summit. <laughs> I think it's just over there, so I'm going to see if I can get up here and find a pitch. I think this is the summit. Magnificent pile of stones. We should get a lovely view. Oh yes. Look at that. Wow, absolutely beautiful. Woo! Oh, right here I'm on the summit. 
don't know if you'll make it out, just a wee jumble of stones. It's not a Corbett, it's not a Monroe. It's a lovely, quiet hill. There was no path coming up. There was a lot of heather bashing, as you can see. And this is the top. I don't think it's actually got a name. The, um, the hill fort is down here. It's the next hill down. I don't know if I'm going to go to it or not. Um, but it's just lovely. I mean, look at the views all the way around. Beautiful, especially over this way. So I think uh, up the glen there and down there is the nicest views. This is the open hill land up here in the high moorland and down over this way. This is, uh, we're right on the edge of the highlands here. And you can see down at the Fife, you can see the Lomond Hills um, down the Strath. Absolutely gorgeous. So I'm going to head over here and see if I can get a pitch nearer the uh, the steeper part. Or well, the view down the steeper part anyway, just to, just to see if I can get a nice spot. Um, not feeling too confident. <laughs> I can't see any grassy bits, I can't see any level bits. It's all, uh, it's all heathery down that way anyway. So let's go and investigate and see what I can find though. Right, let's head over. Right, I have been searching for quite a bit of time actually to find <laughs> somewhere to pitch my tent. And although this bit isn't ideally perfectly flat, I mean, to be honest with you, it's pretty rare <laughs> in my experience that you get something that's billiard table flat. And that's where the decent ground mats come in. So I'm going to set the tent up here. It's not a bad view. You probably can't see it from, uh, from where the camera is at the moment, but I'm going to get the tent up here and uh, I'll report back in a wee while. The one thing I was going to say to you was, if I do talk about my um, my backpack, my rucksack, one of the things, me, well, one of the things that, or the advantage that I saw with this one, and drew me to it, is it's quite narrow. I don't know if you can see the profile, but it's not much wider than my uh, than my body, and I really like that. You see, it's quite slim, um, and I wanted to show you that before I empty it all because you get a better idea of it um, when it's uh, when it's full of stuff as opposed to when it's when it's empty and uh, there's these compression straps on the side which are quite good for uh, well compressing things but also attaching things like tripods to which is fine so yeah I will maybe go over the backpack once I get the tent up depending on uh, how long it ta takes me to do so let's shut up let's get this tent up and let's get relaxed for the evening <laughs> Lots of tarm again. <laughs> Lots of sheep shit as well. Oh, this looks about as level as <laughs> flat a bit as I'm going to get. But it's a lovely, uh, it is a lovely spot, I must admit that. If I don't say so myself, right, pull in. I tell you, one of the things I love about this tent is it's just so easy to uh, put up. <laughs> Call me lazy. But with the inner attached, there's no faffing about with it. I just, uh, I just love it. it. Makes it very easy and quick. He says, as he hits a snag. <laughs> there you go. Ooh, just about in the heather here. <laughs> this might just be the perfect size. Right, time to get this tightened up now. That's okay, that. Lovely, not bad, eh? <laughs> not a bad wee spot. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. Ooh, now that I've stopped, kind of, yeah, I'm not, not getting too cold, but I do have lots of layers with me, and that's quite an important thing to, to remember when you're coming camping. Bring lots of layers um, so you don't get cold. There we go. We later on, and I've got another two layers. I've got a duvet jacket, which uh, I always suggest bringing a duvet jacket, even in the summer, <laughs> in the wild camps, it can get cold. And I've got a fleecy uh, yellow top as well that I'm going to wear. So, yeah, I'm going to um, going to get my sleeping pad and sleeping mat out, get the tent ready inside, and then I'll maybe I'll maybe talk over the bag, just some of the things that I like about it. If you're interested in that, the sleeping pad that I've got is a sea to summit. Um, can't remember which one, I'll put the <laughs> brand up there, the brand, the model up here and it's also a C to Summit, I think it's an SK2 um, 
sleeping bag, uh, which I use sort of three seasons. And it's a lot lighter than my winter Rab and x stuff. But uh, yeah, I will report back in a minute. <laughs> Getting it. So this is a sleeping pad. It's a Sea to Summit Etherlite XT insulated, and it's a large size because I'm large. It's probably the only thing that I've got that's not extra large. <laughs> Things when I get large to wear are usually a bit slim, a bit trim and slim in me. And the good thing about this is the carry bag that it comes in to carry it is also the uh, inflation device, which is quite nice. See if you haven't uh, carry a separate one. That's pretty good. Oh, there we go. It's probably too pumped up at the moment. Oh, look at that. Nice big bit of sheep shit <laughs> on the bag. But anyway, it's probably a bit too pumped up. But what I'll do is before I go to sleep, I'll let a wee bit out. I've said this before just to allow you to sink into it. It makes it a lot more comfortable. I'll have to clean that sheep. Look at that! Again. What a mess. Oh, yuck. And I'll be going through the wash when I get home. I've just uh, cleaned the sheep poo off the bag. One of the good things about sphagnum moss is it cleans a lot. It's good, it's good as a cleaner, so I was using the sphagnum moss to, uh, to wipe the stuff off. So anyway, this here is the, uh, the sleeping bag. See to summit again. This is, as I said, this is my three season stuff. I don't tend to use this in the winter as much, but it packs down a lot smaller. Ultra dry down, spark, 850. Let's just see, I'll see if I can get the, the actual details. I'm scared to put it in the grass now. <laughs> it's, it's covered in shit. Yeah, so it's a spark SP2 C to summit. Uh, comfort rate in 4 degrees, lower limit, minus 2. So I looked at the forecast, I don't think it's going to get below eight or nine degrees, so that should be fine. It lofts up really nicely, actually. It packs down really nice, and it? Lofts up fantastically well, and I've been really pleased with this since I started using it a few years ago. Lovely, right. Super, just about there. Okay. Oh. Smooth that. <laughs> More poo, right. I'll do this very quick. I, I don't really do gear reviews, as you know. The only time I um, tend to do any is if you guys are asking me about stuff. I don't I don't tend to buy that much gear. The, the only time I seem to buy loads of gear is when I can't get out in the hills, and that's why I bought these, <laughs> these trousers and a, my yellow tops, because I wasn't getting out. It seems to be the only time I, I seem to, uh, to buy gear, and I, I do tend to use gear if I like it and I keep it. This relay must be about 15 years old and the old bag I had was probably about 15 years old as well and I, I decided to change to this bag because I was doing a few uh, long distance or multi-day treks last year and I thought it's about time I changed it. The old Deuter one it was fine, it was thick, it was padded, it, padded. it was quite heavy so I thought I'd, I'd go for something something new just, just for those trips and uh, this is what I went for. It's a Osprey Ether Pro 70 uh, what can I say about it? It's quite light. Um, it's got a kind of mix between an external and internal frame. I must say it is very comfy. Uh, I'm not going to go into all the technical stuff. I'm just going to tell you what I think as it, as I found it. I'm not banging on about what type of material it is because I don't. Well, you, but you guys might care. I'm like, that's, I, I do apologise if you do care. I don't give a monkey's. <laughs> Main thing is it's very comfortable. Um, it fits it, you know, once you've got it strapped on, it does sit really close to you. You can loosen it off, you can loosen the uh, the shoulder straps. I did do that quite a lot when I was walking the Sky Trail, um, just to relieve different pressure points when I was getting achy muscles. Uh, but certainly that, it wasn't too bad. Uh, when, when it has to be tight to you, it can be very tight. And that's great if you're scrambling or going along narrow ridges or it's windy or what have you. Uh, I like that about it. I also like the fact, like I said, that it's narrow and that's, you know, I can use it. If I'm going up climbs, again, I don't have any side pockets sticking out that I might catch on a, a rocky ledge if I'm going across it or if I'm trying to get up a chimney. Should I be uh, scrambling somewhere, I don't know, like Curved Ridge or something like that. I just like that. The other thing I really liked about it is not there's not too many faffy bits. And what I mean is like, there's one compartment. I really like that. Um, it's really quite a simple bag. Uh, there's only one way in from the top. Uh, one compartment. It doesn't come with a... A cover, a rain cover, and that doesn't bother me because I don't tend to use them. I find that they blow off and 
the width of the width of the landscape. So what I tend to do if I'm if I'm going out and it's raining, I pack everything in dry bags anyway within the bag to try and compartmentalise things. It's got a water pouch. That's about the only pouch in it. Um, with a bladder filtration system, like you can see I've got mine coming out the, the end there. It's got a detachable hood, I've never used it without the hood, uh, which has got one zip, one pocket in, which is quite large for putting bits and bobs in. As I said, it's got the compression st uh, straps down the side, I use them for putting bits and bobs on the side. Not, not that it sticks out too much, but it uh, allows you to put my tripod and sometimes uh, the tent. I usually put the tent on the front um, and a dry bag as well to save it uh, going inside the bag. And if you've not got much in the bag, you can use the compression straps to compress it down. The one thing I really do like about it are these big pockets on the side. On the trails, I use it to put like little snacks in there, but also my cameras. Really accessible for cameras and microphones and things like that. And there's two, two pockets. One's meant to be for uh, a water bottle, but I never used it for a water bottle. I just put my cameras in. It. You can take these off as well if you if you if you like. Uh, really comfy. You can adjust the back system. It's got um, I don't know what you call it, some sort of airflow system. But in my experience, those things are are okay. But you'll always get a sweaty back. Um, seems to be quite tough. The material seems to be quite tough. Um, and that's about it. I don't want to bang on about it because you know what? Um, well, one of the reasons I don't do gear videos is because I actually don't particularly enjoy watching <laughs> gear videos. Um, but yeah, no, um, good bag. <laughs> good bag. Right, I'm going to shut up now. You don't want to hear me banging on about that. I'm going to settle down and have something to eat and uh, yeah, not talk about gear anymore. Right, shut up Murray. Stop banging on about gear. I'll leave that to the pros. It's raining ever so slightly. I can barely feel it, but you can hear it. It's the thing about being in the tent. Things like rain and wind are often amplified. <laughs> it makes it sound a lot worse than it is. But yes, a wee light shower blowing through. So I'm going to sit in here. I've had something to eat. And uh, yeah, I'll give you a wee tour of where I am once this rain's gone off. I'm going to chill in the tent for a bit. Probably got about an hour till sunset. But the <laughs> there's enough cloud to make sure there ain't going to be much to see as the sun goes down, but I'm not, not complaining, most of the tops are clear of cloud and I've got a great view, so I'm going to sit in here and chill, enjoy the view, and I'll take you for a wee donder and show you the, the beautiful views that I've got. <laughs> right, let's just chill in here for a bit. Right, oh, oh it's got a wee bit more cloudy, oh, what a view though, right. I'm going to go for a wee donder over here. You can see it's uh, the temperature's dropped a wee bit. i um, just put my vents up on my trousers. But I've got my beanie on and my fleecy jacket, so I'm all cosy. So I'm gonna, there's a wee point over here I looked at camping, but uh, it's a great viewpoint. It was just wasn't uh, the right terrain for the tent to go down on. So I'll take you over there and do a bit to camera there. What a place, though. Oh, lots of deep hair that. Just have to watch what I'm doing with my feet without my poles here. Oh yeah. This is a lovely wee spot down here. Hopefully you can see me. Oh be Jesus. <laughs> oh. Wow. This is a fantastic spot. Just a shame that there wasn't the, there's lots of heather here, so I couldn't have pitched the tent here, but the view here is just absolutely fabulous. And the difference between this spot and I'm, my tent is literally about 25 metres over there. I get a view down to the south of the glen as well as out to the west where it snakes round. It's absolutely beautiful. Absolutely fantastic. You can see the river down there bending. Oh, lovely. So I've got, come and grabbed the camera, it's probably better to show you handheld, but you can see out west, like I was saying, that's down the glen, absolutely beautiful. Then the view over this way, down to the south, is just as nice. The clouds just in and over the tops now, which is disappointing. Ah, never mind. Just gives me an excuse to come back another time. But as I said, this isn't, well, oh, and that's my tent. <laughs> I don't know if you can just see it. Just over there. But, um, yeah, I, I was going to say that yeah, the, where I've come, it's not um, it's not a, one of these famous Monroes or Corbett's, and there wasn't there wasn't even a path 
up it and I just I just kind of picked the map picked the map up and I always do this I like to look through maps it's a bit of a geeky thing I've always fancied coming up here and um, I've finally done it and well I'm not not disappointed I mean that view I hope you agree with me is just absolutely it's on a par with many many of the uh, more I don't know, well-known places. So you don't always have to just follow the crowds. And uh, although I've done that and still continue to do it and go to the honeypot locations, sometimes if you just look for something a bit different and maybe do a bit of investigating yourself, you can uh, you can find these places. And it takes a bit of strain off the uh, the more well-known places, uh, which are you know it's just getting busier and busier. Which is good. More and more folk are getting out. But uh, sometimes it's nice just to spread the love. <laughs> <laughs> Spread the love. So I'm gonna st stand here for a bit longer. Stand stand here and enjoy the view. And then I've got some whiskey back at the tent and I'm gonna go and enjoy that with my peanuts, which I usually have if you watch the videos, you all know that. So but yeah, look at that. Absolutely stunning. What a view. Uh, get some whiskey. I almost smell that whiskey. <laughs> so after enjoying the viewpoint, I headed back to the tent where I had my whiskey waiting and I just chilled for the evening in the tent, enjoying the whiskey and my peanuts and enjoying the views as darkness fell around me. Well, it's been um, it's been great actually. I got a wee bit of uh, the, the views didn't disappear, but there was a wee bit of uh, light rain came in. And as I said earlier on, it always sounds like it's heavier when you're inside the tent, but it, it wasn't. It was just very very light rain, and the cloud uh, it's cleared the tops, but it's not uh, <laughs> cleared the sky. I was hoping that the stars might come out, but uh, that's not happened yet. And we're getting on a bit, it's probably past 10 o'clock now. But uh, my knee's been okay. We'll see how it is uh, going downhill tomorrow. I don't want to keep banging on about it because it's just a sore knee. Worst that can happen is I don't get to go up the hills anymore. <laughs> You'll see me more in my bike and my kayak. There's plenty of people out there, people that I know, friends that I know that have got a lot, lot more um, worrying things than a, than a sore knee to worry about. So it puts things in perspective sometimes. But anyway... I am pleased with the progress, the, um, with bearing what I've just said in mind, um, in the hill walking front, it, it kind of has, um, I don't, I never take things for granted, I never take where I live for granted, I never take going out in the hills for granted, I don't take the beautiful Scottish Highlands scenery, all that stuff, never take it for granted, but what this injury has done is it's just kind of made me realise that this might not, you know, you're, you're, you don't know what's around the corner, you don't know how your body's going to react to things, I'm no spring chicken anymore, <laughs> and since um, since it was sore going downhill, I've, I've, I've not really, I've not rested on my laurels, I think I've, I've tried to keep going with, whether it be kayaking with Jerry or going out on the bike, uh, just any sort of outdoor activity and being able to come out and do this again has been been fantastic, and I uh, just hope that the the knee, the knee hole, um, heals fully as we go. And I have been seeing a physio. I will probably do a video in the next few months, providing everything goes to plan with the recovery, just to pass on my thoughts about what I've done and what I've learned through the experience. So yeah, I'm really I'm really glad to have been able to get out today. And what a spot! I've been taking some shots. Um, of the tent well, I don't know what they've come out like but you'll see them at some point in the video if they came out any good so I'm going to hit the hay uh, now uh, there's no point in me setting up I, I usually set up some time lapse of stars but that's not going to happen there's no point in doing that so I'm just going to go to bed and get up early and see if there's a, a nice sunrise although it's forecast to be cloudy in the morning as well so for now night night 
and I'll see you in the morning. Right, time for bed. Might finish this whiskey first though. <laughs> Oh dear. Well, good morning people. <laughs> it's not too cold actually, and there's hardly a breath of wind. I don't know if you can hear that. Bird song. <laughs> Meadow pippets, grouse and a cuckoo. Cuckoo! Cuckoo! <laughs> I woke up at about, I don't know, half past two and uh, didn't really get fully back to sleep and then about an hour ago the bird song started so I thought so that let's just get up it's still well the sun hasn't risen yet put it that way it's early early it's about five o'clock in the morning probably about quarter to five I just thought you know what? I'm not getting any sleep so I'm gonna get up and I'm probably just gonna pack the tent away and get down <laughs> get down the road and get back and get a coffee back home as opposed to setting up a coffee here um, just because just, I'm not that far it doesn't take me long to get back once I get back down to the car I'm about half an hour from home so I can uh, go and get the kettle on and earn some brownie points and spend the, uh, the rest of Sunday with the family but uh, for the time being I'm not, I'm not going to rush to take the tent down I'm just going to take my time it's rather pleasant it's not often awake in a wild camper I'm on top of a Scottish hill and there's not much wind or rain Although it doesn't look like there's going to be a nice sunrise Too much cloud about but I'm not going to complain Right Let's start packing away oh. Oh, my least favourite part of a camp is breaking it down getting it all away Ugh. Oh wee! What I always do as well, as soon as I get home The tent has not been that wet, there was a wee bit of light rain last night So the tent isn't actually that damp, but there are wee spots of slight dampness on it So I always, always leave it to hang and dry For, a, for 24 hours, just to save any mould or Anything like that forming in the tanks. If you don't unpack it, these things can tend to happen. I'll just try and look after the kit when I can. It goes for my boots as well, always give them a wash down. Let's <laughs> right, get in there. Nothing but a bit of flattened grass. That's all you want to be leaving. 
as always. Remembering the leave no trace principle, I packed up and left just flat grass behind me. And the weather hadn't really got any worse and it hadn't really got any better. It'd been a really fantastic camp. One last look, make sure I've not left anything. Right, let's go. So all that was bothering me now and all that remained was to descend back down the hill and as you know this was the, the real test for me with the heavy pack on I was keen actually to see how my knee would hold out on the steeper ground and heading back down to the car. Whew. Right folks, I'm nearly down so I thought I'd just do a short piece to camera before I get back to the car and give you an update, my knee's actually been fine coming down there I mean, don't get me wrong, this is no, no way a, a big mountain or a big hike but it's the first time I've had a big bag on uh, with my camping gear so I'm, I'm really pleased that uh, I've got no knee pain Famous last words, I'll get down to this last wee bit and I'll be in agony no doubt but <laughs> giving it a kiss of death But what a great wee trip uh, as I mentioned before, sometimes you don't, you, you, sometimes you just need to, if you want a bit of solitude, just look at the map, see if there's somewhere you fancy going. If you don't, fan, if you don't, excuse me, if you don't mind doing a wee bit of off-path walking over some rough ground, there's so many, the, the, there's so many places, so many beautiful, beautiful places, and I'll be back here. I quite fancy this one in the winter, to be honest with you. But uh, lovely, yeah, love, still lovely views behind me all the way down. I've had this lovely view down the glen behind me, which is great. So. I'm going to end the video here, uh, if you've made it this far, thank you very much for watching. As always, stay safe out there, and I'll see you on the next adventure. Right, back to the car, let's go.